Hello, hello. How are you doing guys today? Hello, daddy. How's Hi, it going? Uh, it's going good. Um, the weather's taking a turn for the springtime since it's, uh, what was it, the first weekend of spring? So that's good. That means it's fall for you, yes? Um, yes, already at home. Yes. So, it was a cold cool day today, see? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Not get so cold, cool. a little bit. Getting a little chilly there already. Um, yeah. Probably not as cold as it is here. No. So, anyways, no, it's been a good day. Um, getting some stuff done. How about you, Saw? Yes, it was a busy day, <laughs> but good already because it's becoming a little a little bit uh cold so uh, not so hot as before yes so it's really good okay more so about today huh? more comfortable more comfortable yes yes fresh air <laughs> close to the beach it's really good yeah, yeah. I I really like it. Change my days to 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 be close to the beach or to go there, spend some time, go deep in the water. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I just avoid to to swim swim so long. Sounds like a good time, and I hope everybody out there is ready to learn some. Uh, what do you say? Common. Idioms, and they sound like a fun time. Let's let's get started on these, huh? Yes, common idioms that native speakers use use. So now, throughout this section, you're going to see the idioms. You're going to understand the meaning, and you see an examples also sentence, and uh, you can see a picture to really help you guys to remember these idioms and let's get started with the first one so we will make it in some classes yes? and let's start in the first one Ooh, the first one says to play something by ear or to play it by ear uh, you would say that when you're not sure how things are going to go. So you're going to say, let's play it by ear. Um, Cause you can't really plan it out because you're not sure how it's going. So yeah, to play it by ear, to play something by ear. Um, yeah. So go ahead. Saw. Oh, great. Yes. To play something by ear. This is uh, when you make a decision in the moment, rather than, planning in advance so let's say you're talking about your weekend and your your husband or your friend says what do you want to do this weekend and you might say let's play it by ear let's decide as the weekend happens uh not in advance let's bl play it by ear Good. and the second word what is that little critter i want one so to be all ears so to be all ears is to listen up you guys listen up give me your ears I need to hear I need you to listen to what i have to say so to be all ears, uh, little wiggle, little wiggle. Let me know that you're listening. So yeah, listen closely. Go ahead, Saw. Oh, good. Yes, yeah, to be all ears. Good job, Daddy. So we use this to say that you're ready to listen and your your painful attention. So let's say you tell your boss, for example, you want to discuss something 
important about the project? And their boss replies, I'm all ears. I'm all ears. Next. Ooh, to wake up on the wrong side of the bed. To wake up and be grumpy, irritable. Uh, not in a good mood, that's for sure. That's what that means. To wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Um, you would ask if your significant other was all grumpy in the morning. You're like, ooh, somebody woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. <clears throat> Might want to mumble that somewhere else. <laughs> Might get slapped. So, anyways, go ahead, stop. <laughs> yes, good. So, uh, the third one, no, third idiom. Yes, good job, Daddy. To wake up on the wrong side of the bed. This is a great one. With all the this is when you wake up in a bad mood, you wake up grumpy. So let's say you wake up, you go in the kitchen, and your wife or your husband says, Oh, hi, honey, how are you? Would you like some coffee? What do you want for breakfast? And you're grumpy. Uh, I don't care. Uh, where's my phone? And you're being grumpy. Well, then your wife, your husband can say, well, someone woke up on the wrong side of the bed and that is just to let you know you're being grumpy. Yes, next. To swing, to, or to wing something. It would be like to wing it. So just wing it. Um, we would say uh, when you're out in the field doing your job, and you're not sure how it's going or how you, you're supposed to do it, you're gonna say, well, just wing it. You'll get it taken care of. I know you, I trust you, you can get it. So wing it um, to, as you would say, to perform or speak without preparing in advance. Kind of like that one we had, the, one of the first ones we had. Um, to wing it, yeah. Just throwing it together as you go. So go ahead, stop. Yes, amazing. Good examples. Yes. So the idiom for to wing something. When you wing something, you perform or uh, uh, speak without preparing or planning in advance. So you definitely don't want to wing your IELTS exam, right? To make a mountain of a molehill. And that is the next. Oh, it's not here the far. Let's go to the six. Oh, yeah, we're missing five. I know that one, to make a mountain out of a molehill, to make something bigger than it is. Yeah, that's a good one. So number oh. six, to be at a crossroads or to be at the uh, fork in the road, somewhere where you're going to have to choose which direction to take. Um, and you're not sure which one is, or either way, either one's going to take you. To be at a fork in the road or a rock in a hard spot, as we would say too, to be in a rock in a hard spot. Um. Yeah, just you got to figure out which way you want to go. So be a fork in the road or to be at a crossroads. Um, yeah, just in a situation where you're not sure which direction in life or at work or at 
on the road. So, yeah, go ahead, Saw. Yes. Uh -huh. So this number six to be at a crossroads. This is when you have to make a really important decision as that it told that could impact your life that he explained before. So uh, let's say you are a graphic designer for 10 years, but you consider going back to school and changing careers and become a lawyer or a teacher. So you might say, I'm not sure if I want to be a graphic designer anymore. I'm at a crossroads because that decision will impact your life. Next. Very good. That was a good one. Oh, so to be raining cats and dogs, which it does a lot down there. Um, you guys got like cows and sheep, though. To rain cows and sheep. It rains a lot down there. But yeah, to rain cats and dogs means it's raining really heavy. Buckets of rain. Um, we would say it's raining cats and dogs out there. I can't go out there. I might step in a poodle. So yeah, extremely heavy rain when it's raining cats and dogs. Can you go ahead, Sarah? Yes, great. Amazing example. So yes, the seventh one to rain cats and dogs. This is when this is rains heavily. So let's say your friend in a different city asks you, oh, did it rain last night? And uh, did it uh, rain uh, heavily? You can say, yeah, it rained cats and dogs. <laughs> Next. Oh, to be on top of the world. Like when we were kids, be on top of the world again. Um, that's what we I would say when we were kids, because we were truly happy when we were little, you know, we no cares in the world except for if there was milk in the refrigerator, if the cartoons were playing. I just want to play with my friends and go outside. So I was on top of the world. Yeah, to be um um everything's going right for you. That makes it really good. So you want to be on, you'll be on top of the world. Probably when all your friends come out of the woodworks too. Supposed friends. So anyways, go ahead, stop. Yes, great. Uh -huh. So this number eight to be on top of the world. Yes. That was a good example. So, uh, what I can add about that one should be on top of the word. Yes, yeah, so this is when you're really, really happy. So let's say you got a new promotion. You can say, I'm on top of the word next day. Yes, to give someone the cold shoulder. So if someone is annoying you, um or threatening you or calling you names you could just turn around and give them the cold sh shoulder um or you turn the other cheek you can say or um sometimes you say give them the cold shoulders when you you're the one actually being rude because they might be talking to you and you turn around give them the cold shoulder and just walked away so it's not always about you the yeah, you could be doing it and just being rude. Yeah. Yeah. See, so to ignore someone when they're being rude or you're being rude and ignoring them. But yeah, to, to give someone the cold short. Just give them the cold short. So go ahead. No. Could you say again? It's interesting what you thought. Oh, to give someone a cold shoulder about... uh. 
of someone like like on your picture there you got her just ignoring the ignoring him so it's giving him the cold shoulder or yeah turning the other cheek that so yeah go ahead yes so the eject the the omen nine i mean the previous uh video yet huh? so to give someone the cold shoulder it's when you ignore someone and you ignore someone in, on purpose, usually because you're mad at them, annoyed with them, they did something wrong or something to irritate you. So let's say your husband or your wife is ignoring you. You might say, why are you giving me the cold shoulder it's another way of asking why are you mad at me what did i do wrong why are you giving me the cold shoulder next number 10 oh to sit on the fence to hang it up um, I guess to hang it up is different. As you put it, to, to delay making a decision, to sit on the fence, to to make sure you're making the right decision, basically. Just just sit on the fence for a little bit. Make sure you're you're deciding that you're make you're going the right way on this on this decision. Um yeah, just just hang it up for a little bit. Um yeah. That's about all I got for that one. I don't use that one very much either. So go ahead. Yes, great. So to sit on the fence, the 10 already. On the fence. So this is when you delay making a decision, usually because that decision is difficult and you don't want to make it. For example, I asked my boss for a promotion, but he's sitting on the fence. So he won't answer me. He won't say yes. He won't say no. He keeps just saying, oh, I need to think about it. I will get back to you. He's sitting on the fence. Next. Number 11, to hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I saw you, knit, you hit the nail on the head on that last one. It was perfect. <laughs> to get something dead nuts <laughs> or exactly. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, to get something right or to nail it. We say, you nailed it. We have a commercial. Nailed it. Um, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh, that's what it means. You nailed it. Perfect. So go ahead. So. Yes, great. So to be, to hit the, the nail on the head. Um, so... Um... That's one, it's 11, no? So to hit the nail on the head. This is when you accurately explain a problem or a situation. For example, you hit the nail on the head when you said we ne needed to reduce our costs. So you explain the situation accurately. Ac Next. Accurately. Mm -hmm. I, I seen you were having troubles with that one. Accurately. Accurately, yes. Accurately, yes. That's um accurately. Yeah. 
Yeah, accurately. That's a hard one. You need to spell it out so you can see it better. My head is cut off. Now. So mm -hmm. anyway, number 12. But you, you're doing good, darling. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's hard for you to, to say it because I know you want to say it so good. Um, but it's, it's, I think it's kind of messing your brain up a little bit sometimes. So, all right. So number 12, to be as fit as a fiddle. Yeah. To <laughs> strong fit. Something that we were when we were kids. And then as we get older, not so much. We start getting more fit as a piglet. <laughs> So fit as a fiddle, um, I don't know where they came up with that term, but um, maybe because of the shape of the fiddle. But yeah, just to be really fit, to be healthy, uh, that's what we'd say to somebody if they were healthy and fit. You're as fit as a fiddle. Or if uh, a business asks you, um, well, how's your health? And you'd be saying fit as a fiddle, but I think doctors say it a lot to you. Well, you're fit as a fiddle when you go and Yo, get huh? Yeah. So, all right, go ahead, Saul. Yes, great. Uh -huh. So, 12, medium 12, to be as fit as a fiddle. This simply means you feel great. You have a good healthy, you're in a good shape. So you maybe you could say uh since I changed my diet and I am eating more fruits and vegetables, I feel as fit as a fetal next step. Good job. Um, yes, number Thank three. You. To get something out of your system. So as we are getting older, you know, um, and we have always wanted to do something or uh, before you go and do something else, you might want to get something out of your system. So as in the skydiving picture you got going on here, they probably always wanted to go do it. So before they got married, they went and skydived or right after they got married and they went and did it together. So I know Saw wants to go skydiving. I don't think I could do it. I think I would have a heart attack. But anyways, yeah, to get something out of your system, uh, you can even say that for... If you're talking to your spouse and they might ask you, do you need to get something out of your system before uh, we do this or before we go somewhere? Yeah. It just means to get it out before it's too late. So go ahead, Saw. Number 
We can't hear you. That whole time, I couldn't hear you at all. Oh my goodness, really? Yep, no. now I can't. That whole time I'm like, I can't hear you. Oh, I didn't understand, so blah, blah. I know I can't write on this thing, it's stupid. <laughs> it's hard to write. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so no, that, time... whole time, that whole time we couldn't hear nothing you said. Oh my. <laughs> so let's go ahead. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't pay attention. Actually, I look at your you writing, but I didn't understand even though. I know I can. That's it, not easy to write with that little thing. <laughs> I thought it's a, uh, it's something about the grammar. <laughs> no, well, when I point out my ears, let's say uh, that's a good sign they can't hear. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. Next one. Yes, I, t I talked something about that too. Yes. Uh, so the 13 uh, good, good uh, examples that it, so to get something out of your system. Yes, to get something out of your system. This is when you do something or you try something simply so you can move on for example let's say you've been talking about going skydiving for years and years you research it you look at different websites you talk to people about it but you've never actually done it Someone might say, just go skydiving so you can get it out of your system. So once you do it, you can stop researching it. You can stop looking it, look it up and just move on. I like this one. Yeah. I bet you do. You are one of those uh, type that uh, yeah. wing it, play it by ear, just go for it. You're uh, kind of a little wild and crazy girl. <laughs> you yeah, definitely are. So, all right. <laughs> I uh, I did uh, close it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Speak of the devil. Uh, that's something you would say like if your spouse or your friend was calling or showing up right at the time that you were just talking about them. So like if I was talking about Saw to somebody and she called me or she showed up, I would be like, well, speak of the devil. It's just the same. It doesn't mean that they're the devil. <laughs> well... <laughs> uh, no. yeah speak of the devil when you're talking about someone and then they show up at the exact time so go ahead so. that lady right there looks like the devil her hair and her <laughs> eyes oh. <laughs> yes I like that one you speak of the devil this sounds negative because of devil but it's not at all. This is used when you're talking about uh, someone and they appear as that it told you exactly as you're talking about them. So this has happened, right? Let's say you're talking to a friend about your virtual friend Bob, and you're talking about uh, Bob. Oh, it's is Bob going to come to the party? Oh, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to Bob. And then your phone rings, and guess what? 
it's bug. And then you can say, speak of the devil. Next. Yeah. So Bob, do you guys have people named Bob down there? Probably. I would like to know what you call Bob. Yeah, jokes. But anyways, all right. Number 15, to give someone the benefit of the doubt. By giving someone the benefit of the doubt is you are trusting them with more than what um, what normally you probably wouldn't or giving them giving them a better compliment on how they're doing on their work than what you normally would so you would be giving them the benefit of the doubt if well even if they're wrong because you're like man i was but i was giving you the benefit of the doubt to someone that messed up or did better than they they were going to so yeah Go ahead, Sock. Yes, this is great. So, to give someone the benefit of the doubt. This is when you trust someone. When they tell you something. So, if a co-worker is late and they call you and they say, I'm it's stuck in traffic let's give him the benefit of the doubt let's trust that he is actually stuck in traffic mm -hmm. Next. no pain no gain not too pain no gain it's no pain no gain yes yeah sure. oops i think a lot of people know that one yeah everybody yeah, a lot of things you know not just working right. out um it's also with school work it's with work at um homework but yeah to work it's to to gain something by working hard and it's it's painful because you're working so hard at it but you're gonna gain something out of it so yeah, if you have no pain, you'll probably get no gain. That doesn't mean cutting a finger off because that doesn't count. But <laughs> well, I'll cut a finger <laughs> off. Maybe no, I'll gain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead, stop. Yes. So no pain, no gain. Good job. So so good examples, eh? He always bring to us. So this is a classic one. This is used to say that if you want results, real results, you have to be. Are you writing the screen? I I just know. I did. I put an, an N over the T. Okay. No, I, I talk about that 16. Yes. My yes. parents. Yeah, yes. They didn't know. So, uh, the, the idiom 16, no pain, no gain. Yes. This is a classic one. This is used to say that if you want results, real results, you have to be willing to work hard and to get uncomfortable. So I might say, if you want to improve your public speaking skills, no pay, no gain. You have to be willing to get uncomfortable and next 
Yeah, that was perfect. Good job. You hit that. Nail on the head. So, yeah. Um, Number 17, hang in there. So, yeah, like when you're at work and you're getting tired and you're wearing out of energy, I would I would try to boost up the spirits, but then also say, well, hang in there. We're almost done. We almost got this. Just hang in there a little bit longer. Two more minutes. Um, you can get that one when you're working out, too. Um, and you're helping someone build up their their um, self-esteem. You can say, hang in there. We got this. You got this. So, yeah. Don't give up. So go ahead, Saw. I like the picture. Can't hear you. Oh, great, yes, good job. So that 17, hanging there. Yes, don't give up. So I know learning a language is hard, but hanging in there. Next. Hang in there, you'll get it. So yeah, number 18. So hang in there, yes. We, we would say a penny for your thoughts. When you want to pick someone's brain about something, you would say, hey, uh, what about a penny for your thoughts on this subject? Um, someone would, that, this is an old one. This is something that you would probably hear your grandparents say. I haven't heard it in a long time because my thoughts are worth more than a penny now. Oh, yes. And, yeah, it would be like a dollar for your thoughts. Uh, we used to say um, two cents. Here's two. Uh, let me give you two cents for your, you know, and two cents would be some thoughts. Because, uh, you know, your cents. Um, can't really. I'm saying it wrong. But anyways, go ahead. So. Yes. Adjective. Actually, the idiom 18, a penny for your thoughts. This is used to ask someone what they're thinking. So let's say your friend is just uh, is staring out the window and you probably are wondering, what are they thinking about? You can turn to your friend and say, a penny for your thoughts. Yes, next. Yeah. Yeah, number 19. It's not rocket science. It's something we say at work a lot to the guys because they're not getting it right. And we're like, come on. You guys have been doing it every day. This is not rocket science. This is just paving or just construction. Something that's simple. So why are you getting it wrong every day when you've done it so much? Yeah, so it's not rocket science when it's no brainer. It's a no brainer. So go ahead, stop. Great, a good job. Always, eh? So the 19th is not rocket science. Rocket science is complicated, right? But if we say it's not rocket science. This means it's not complicated. So I could say becoming a confident English speaker is not rocket science. It's not complicated. You just have to practice speaking. Yes. And next, Daddy. Yeah, so yeah, that was good. Yeah, learning English isn't rocket science. Uh, I would say learning Portuguese is rocket science to me. It's speaking oh, uh -huh. Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Well, not as bad. So, all right, number 20 to yeah, let okay. someone off the hook. So, if someone is um, in trouble or ex wanted for something because they might be in trouble um 
but then we let them go because it's because it's not them or somebody else did it. You're letting them off the hook. You're letting them go. Um, they're no longer in trouble. So you let them off the hook. I need to look some of these up to see where they originated from because I think that would be pretty cool to get the the why they came about. So yeah, letting them off the hook. It wasn't your fault. All right, well, we're going to let you off the hook this time. Be careful next time. So go ahead, Saw. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh -huh. Good. So you already explained that to us to let someone off the hook. And something else to add to that. So this is a great one because, well, it means that doesn't punish someone for a mistake or a wrongdoing. So your boss could say, I know you came in late today, but I'm going to let you off the hook. I'm not going to punish you. Next. Yeah, I don't want to be punished. Saw so you're off the hook today for forgetting your um mute button. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Oops. So yeah, number twenty one. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's better than what I've done. To make <laughs> a long story short. So to make a long story short is to skip to the You'll go from the beginning to the end and, and spare the details and go straight to the point. So I would be telling a story to say, well, let's make a, a long story short. Anyways, so-and-so did this. Yeah. Instead of the details. But sometimes you want to know the details. So go ahead. Stop. Oh, yes. Yes, great, really good, good examples in this idiom 21 to make a long story short. This is when you take a long and you usually complicated story and you make it very simple by sharing it briefly. So you could say, Long story short, we missed our flight. So there's a long story about why you're missing missed your flight, but you don't explain those details. You just say long story short, we missed our flight. Next. Oh, darling. Easy does it now. I would not want you to hurt yourself. So, yeah. So, um, as we get older, we got to we gotta definitely make uh, ourselves slow down. And so, you would want to say, easy does it before you hurt yourself. Um, yeah. Don't push it. Don't, don't lift more than you think you can handle because we're not the same age as we were as you get older. So you might hurt yourself and you might pull something in your back. So I get worked. We'd be like, easy does it. Get help. Ask for help. And so yeah, slow down. Take it easy. So yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, great. So um is it does it? Is it does it? This is a way of say is slow down. So if it, it, your friend is at the gym and they try to do two main exercises with too much weight, you might say. Easy does it, is slow down, yes, next. Yeah, 
Good job. So yeah, number 23. Thank you. To go back to the drawing board, to start over, to, to basically erase everything you've done and start all over from the beginning and get it right the second time or the third or the fourth or the fifth. So as a inventor, they would say, all right, scratch that. Let's go back to the drawing board and begin again. So yeah, just basically starting over um, from scratch or from the beginning. So yeah, that's what we got. Go ahead. Yes, great. So the idiom 23, to go back to the drawing board, yes. You already told a good example. So it means to start over with a plan or a strategy because the first two, the first one failed. So let's say you you are trying to solve a computer problem. You came up with a strategy. It doesn't didn't work, and then you can say, "Well, let's go back to the drawing board and try." It again. Next. Yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Babe. So anyway, number 24. Once in a blue moon. I like that picture. I would put that on my wall. You need to take a print of that. Yes, a beautiful one. Yeah, it is. Um you so are yeah, always one. moving your frames, there is. And I like that. I yeah. need to do it as we use one behind of me. You should get one. <laughs> you should go take pictures um, and print them yourself. Yes. Good yeah. idea. You you did it. Yeah, well, I ordered this. I didn't take the plastic off. It's shiny. No. Yeah. So it anyways, was yeah, it's been a blue moon. Something that... Uh, you only do once in a while, not very often. Because a blue moon, what happens, uh, what's once a year? I think we get a blue moon. It, that's what they call it. I'm not really sure why they say blue moon. Oh, it's a full, it's a new moon. That's what it is. When you have no moon. No, so that happens every three months, four months. It's, a, it's like a cycle. So yeah. Not as often as uh, you would normally do it. So our parents used to say this to us when we were younger. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, so you've heard it too. Yeah, so go ahead, so. Mm -hmm. Great. Good examples. So amazing, actually. So this was in a blue moon is when it uh, happens uh, infrequently. For example, I only see Kara once in a blue moon. Not very often. Next. At the drop of a hat. Um, yeah, we would say if... Uh, if someone is really your friend, they would they would come and help you or rescue you if something were to happen at a drop of a hat. You would, uh, um, yeah, which not a lot of us have true friends like that, but some. But to be able to go uh -huh. and help somebody or go do something at the drop of a hat with no hesitation, with no thought in their mind, just... Okay, I'm on my way. Um, yeah, so something that you would do for someone you care for uh, very much. You would you would do it at a drop of a hat. Uh, you need a plane ticket. You need you know rescuing. You need gas. You need a tire. I would do it in the drop of a hat. And yes, I like that one. Don't get to hear it. Very yes. Often. Yes. 
Uh-huh. Not a lot of people are like that anymore. No, uh huh. Yeah, go ahead and stop. But people uh, don't use a lot of no, no, it's not that they don't use, they don't do. They don't do, yes, yes, yes. Uh, not a lot of people do anymore. It's hard no, to find. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very much so. No, so, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so great. Good job, always. So, at the drop of a hat, this is a great one because it means without hesitation or instantly. For example, call me if you need anything and I'll be there at the drop of a hat. It means I will come instantly if you need anything. So it's a really nice uh, thing to say to someone next number 26 yes uh to add in um to add insult to injury or to kick a dead horse while it's down to just keep picking on someone when they're they're already hurting there's no reason for it but you do people do it all the time um uh -huh. Yeah, that we'd say there's no need to kick them while they're down. But yeah, to add insults to already an injury. Um, yeah, I'm sure you guys, how would you guys say it there? To add insult to injury, probably that way. Yeah, to, uh, yeah, there's no reason to make things worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, uh, and there yeah. are some idioms that is we we don't use, but we have some uh, different ones. Yeah? But it's... Yeah, yeah, but you wouldn't say it that way. Um, you'd probably say it differently. Yes, yes. Go and... ahead. So I don't know how to say in Portuguese. Uh, some idiom that we have close to that one. So to add insult, but I will think about that and I, I will remember, will come in my mind some idiom that we have also, no? Yeah. <laughs> that, I like your what you have put up there. So your first yeah. date, my date showed up late. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. To, add like in, or to insult to the injury, he forgot his wallet, so I had to pay. I bet you they didn't have another date. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. The next one. Yes. So, uh, that one twenty six to eh? Let's add something to the twenty six to add insult to the injury. It's when you have a bad situation, it becomes even worse. So let's say you're going out on a first date and your date should up late. That's already a bad situation. But then to add insult to injury, your date forgot his wallet and you had to pay for both of you. Yes. And yeah. that's good for today, yes, Eddie? We can go 30. A lot. Go 30? Yeah, go 30. Yes. Okay. Let's go 30. It's 150, yes? Yes, 150. That would give us five classes of these if we did 30. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Let's do it. Great. That's yeah. a good idea. Then do it. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, 27. Sorry, I was um I was actually trying to text you and I texted the wrong person. It was a buddy of mine and I called him babe. 
So anyways, it's kind of embarrassing when you do that to a guy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and you say, love, yes. what are you doing? And they're like, I'm okay. <laughs> but thanks for calling me love. So yeah, number 27, to hit the sack. Yes. Uh, darling, it's getting late. You should probably hit the sack. Yeah, it means to go to bed. Um, we, I had a boss when I was commercial fishing. He used to say, it's time to hit the fart sack. It's just funny. It always stuck with me. To hit the fart sack. But yeah, to hit the sack. To hit the hay. To go to bed. So go ahead. Yes, yes, so to hit the sack means to go to sleep. Example, I'm tired, I think I will hit the sack. Next one. Yeah, number 28. The ball is in your court. So you would say that when um, it is, when you're handing over the reins to, or when you're giving someone the the authority to or to make the decisions of what's happening in this situation or in the company. Um, basically, just letting them take control of the thoughts um, on how we should do things. So, yeah, basically letting them take over. So, go ahead, so What's your thoughts? Yes, uh huh. So great what you told us. So the ball is in your court. This is used when you need to make the next decision or the next step. So I might say we offered her a great promotion. So now the ball's in her court. So it's up to her to decide if she is going to accept the promotion or look for another job or do something else. Yes. And next. Good, good. Yeah. So yeah, number 29. We uh so to be or go barking up the wrong tree. Um to be doing uh to how would you put that to look in the wrong place or to accuse the wrong person? I would say like, if you go to your boss and start talking crap or BS to about somebody, um, that you work with, maybe that might be barking up the wrong tree or instead of going to them first, but yeah, or going to the wrong person to tell them about something that is going on that is bothering you. You might be barking up the wrong tree. You might want to think about who you talk to or where you go before you just start barking up the wrong tree. So anyways, yeah, to be at the wrong place or the wrong person. So yeah, go ahead, Saul. Right. Yes, great. Good examples. Eh? So, to be or to go biking up the wrong tree. Yes, this is when you look in the wrong place, you accuse the wrong, wrong person. Yes, so if you think I lost, I lost your ring, you're biking up the wrong tree. Yeah? It means the wrong person. Next. And the last. Yeah, uh, number 30. So to get or to have your ducks in a row, you would say you are falling behind. Your bills are getting, are not getting paid. Um, you're slacking. You need to clean your house. You need to get your ducks in a row is what you would say to someone if they are not doing good in life or in work or to have your ducks in a row is someone that is spot on that's getting everything done 
and they're trying their hardest and they're doing good and they have their ducks in a row. I'm not sure where that originated from, but have you ever seen ducks all lined up? It's pretty, it's pretty cute. I like it. We'll stop all traffic to let the geese or the ducks walk through with their little babies. <laughs> That's awesome. So it means yeah. stop. Yes. Great. Really good. That's really amazing examples, no? And that one also to get or to have your ducks in a row. This is when you you're well prepared or well organized for something specifically. So you might say the conference was supposed to start 10 minutes ago. They should have gotten their ducks in a row. They should have been organized or prepared. Yes, so uh something else to add to that yeah so as you get all these things you got put up in here for us to do to show off to these wonderful people that are learning you got your ducks in a row so you've done wonderful yeah you're doing a great job so yeah, keep it up um i'm sure the people are loving learning all this stuff that you're working so hard to do and uh just to let you know, we all appreciate you and you're doing a good job. So thanks for getting your ducks in a row and having everything so organized. Oh, thanks a lot. I really appreciate your words and uh, I, I'm i here and uh, you are my company every day in our videos. Yes. And that is amazing. <laughs> it's what... Um, motivates me also and uh, all followers yes that they comment and they bring their uh their um uh, ideas to us bring new new topics to to teach to explain and to talk about and you always bring some good examples, uh, good explanations, so they can understand much, much, much better because you know and you really uh, live since you were born, so you know a lot, much, much, much more than me. And that's amazing. Yes, and I really appreciate. Thankful, I'm thankful for everything, yes. Yeah, and, I, uh, I know much okay. more than you. You're definitely smarter than me, but I just, I was raised here. doesn't mean I'm smarter than you. <laughs> or no. no one. That. It no was amazing. One. Yes, you know you're amazing. Eh? <laughs> In your explanation. Thank you. No, you're welcome. So, and uh, in the next class, we'll continue, yes? Uh, talking about that so I hope everybody have uh, good studies and uh, if you need uh, listen watch again this video and don't forget to comment to subscribe in our channel uh, we are in the beginning yet so we need your help also to be with us and of course to know what you think about those videos and comment and we can so uh, bring and uh, something good for you guys and uh, uh, day by day and prepare something that's useful for you and for your interests and we can improve also yes our skills and be our intention is be better and better for you so thanks for everything I really love and enjoy to teach. That is amazing always. He is always uh, asking, oh, let's talk about what? Uh, and always uh, asking about the videos. And we are ready for you guys. So thanks mm -hmm. for everything. And, yeah. and I would like to say thank you all for coming in and 
learning with us. Like I said, I'm learning as well. And sorry about any of the mistakes we have. We are human. And we're trying to do this live, so as well as we can. So, yeah, excuse us for the mistakes. So, anyways, you all have a wonderful evening and hope to see you tomorrow. And don't forget to subscribe. So, good night, you all. Night, night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.